My name is Russell DeBose Boyd, and I'm from the Department of Molecular Genetics at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. In part two of my talk, I'll talk about Schneider corneal dystrophy, or SCD, and the importance of the protein called UBAD in the regulation of cholesterol. So what is Schneider corneal dystrophy? SCD is a rare autosomal dominant eye disease that is characterized by the bilateral opacification of the cornea. This corneal opacification associated with SCD is progressive. It can be detected in patients as young as 10 years of age. And it reduces visual acuity that typically requires corneal transplantation in more than 50% of patients that are over 50 years of age. Now, the biochemical analysis of SCD revealed that cholesterol markedly accumulates in the corneas of SCD patients, which indicates that dysregulation of, corneal, of cholesterol metabolism contributes to the pathology of this disease. Now, mutations in the gene encoding UBAD cause SCD, and this was indicated by these two early papers in 2007. It turns out that 25 missense mutations that alter 21 amino acids in UBAD have been identified in about 50 SCD families. So what is the function of UBAD? So UBAD actually stands for UBIA, parental transferase domain containing protein 1. So UBAD is a membrane protein, as illustrated here, with 8 to 10 transmembrane domains. And it belongs to this huge family of uh, parental transferases called UBIA parental transferases. These UBIA parental transferases are found in all forms of life, from bacteria to man, and they all transfer parental groups to aromatic acceptors, generating a wide range of molecules such as ubiquinones, chlorophylls, heme, vitamin E, and vitamin K. So what does UBAD do? So shown here is another depiction of the cholesterol biosynthetic pathway that I talked about in part one of my talk. So UBAD actually utilizes um, one of the products of the cholesterol synthetic pathway called geronyl geronyl pyrophosphate, or GGPP for short. And what UBAD does is it transfers the geronyl geronyl moiety from GGPP to um, menadione, or a form of vitamin K called vitamin K3, to produce menaquinone 4, or vitamin K2. So UBAD uses GGPP as a substrate to synthesize a form of vitamin K2 called menaquinone 4, or MK4. Now shown here is a um, crystal structure of a bacterial UBIA parental transferase. And on this uh, crystal structure, we've been able to map the uh, amino acids that, uh, that uh, correspond to SCD-associated mutations in human UBAD1. And what these studies reveal is that all of these SCD-associated mutations in UBAD1 cluster around the active site of uh, the UBIA parental transferases, which indicates that perhaps these SCD-associated mutations somehow disrupt the recognition of the enzyme for the isoprenal substrate. Now, our interest in UBAD1 and its role as a sensor of GGPP stems from the fact that early studies in our laboratory had indicated that GGPP mediates or augments the accelerate, sterile accelerated ERAD of HMG reductase that we covered in the first part of my talk. So as shown here, HMG reductase somehow senses sterols, either through direct or indirect mechanisms. This sensing um, causes the reductase to bind to NSIG proteins that are, again, associated with E3 and E2 ubiquitin ligases. This, bridge, this actually bridges reductase to the ubiquitin complex, resulting in ubiquitination of reductase membrane domain. And this ubiquitination causes the reductase to be now recognized by proteasomes and degraded. And it turns out in early studies we discovered that this um, degradation of ubiquitinated reductase is augmented by GGPP. However, the mechanism for this GGPP-enhanced ERAD of the reductase was completely unknown. Okay, the observation that GGPP augments the ERAD of HMG-CoA reductase 
together with the observations that mutations in UBAD, which cause SCD, are predicted to disrupt its binding of GGPP. This prompted us to appraise a role for UBAD in the ERAD of reductase. And that role of UBAD in reductase ERAD is summarized in this slide. So as I mentioned earlier, the accumulation of sterols cause reductase to, become, to bind NSIGs and then become ubiquitinated. And we believe once the reductase is ubiquitinated, a subset of reductase molecules bind to UBAD1. Now importantly, the binding of reductase to UBAD blocks reductase uh, degradation and it protects it from degradation until sufficient levels of GGPP are produced, which in turn bind to UBAD and the binding of GGPP to UBAD results in the dissociation of this reductase UBAD complex, and that dissociation then allows the subsequent membrane extraction, dislocation, and proteosomal degradation of the reductase. In fact, it appears as if UBAD is an inhibitor of reductase ERAD, and this ERAD is, or this inhibition, is relieved by GGPP binding. Now, our first surprise came when we decided to study the subcellular localization of UBAD in cells, and that localization is depicted here. So here we've um, localized UBAD in cells at, that are cultured under conditions in which um, the cells are replete with both cholesterol and GGPP. And we were surprised to find that UBAD localized to um, the Golgi apparatus. However, when we treated these cells with a statin to, to deplete the intracellular stores of GGPP and other non-sterile isoprenoids, we noticed that UBAD relocalized from the Golgi apparatus to the endoplasmic reticulum. We could restore the Golgi localization of UBAD by simply adding GGPP to these um, statin-treated cells. So that allowed us to add another uh, level to our model. And that is, what, um, what's happening under our conditions is that GGPP binding to UBAD not only causes UBAD to dissociate from the reductase, but it also allows um, UBAD to transport from the ER to the Golgi. Now we decided to focus on uh, asparagine 102 of UBAD. This is the most frequently mutated uh, residue in SED patients. And as shown here, this is a model of the human UBAD active site that's built upon the bacterial crystal structure of, of the enzyme. And it shows that this asparagine 102, shown here, actually um, mediates the binding of the isoprenal substrate. So one would predict that the mutation, and I should point out the mutation that's found in the human UBAD is an asparagine 102 to S mutation. And we predict that this mutation would disrupt the binding of UBAD to GGPP. Indeed, mutation of this um, asparagine 102 abolishes, completely abolishes enzymatic activity of the UBAD protein. It also turns out that this um, N102S mutation blocks the ER to Golgi transport of UBAD, and that's depicted in this experiment. So shown on the left is wild type UBAD and cells that are treated with a statin. And you can see that the protein is sequestered within the ER. However, we can induce the translocation of this UBAD to the Golgi by simply adding GGPP to these statin-treated cells. As you can see, the N102S, this SCD-associated N102S version of UBAD, is sequestered in the ER, just like the wild-type protein. However, it's completely refractory to this GGPP-induced transport into Golgi presumably because it can no longer bind to, um, to the substrate GGPP owing to this mutation that converts um, asparagine 102 to serine. Now in subsequent experiments, we've discovered that this UBAD N102S continues to bind to the reductase in the presence of sterols, continues to block reductase degradation. However, because it can no longer sense the levels of GGPP within cells, it never dissociates from the reductase. It remains associated with reductase, remains sequestered in the ER, and this um, sequestration and um, GGPP-resistant binding leads to a block in the reductase degradation.
And we believe that this block and reductase degradation contributes to the accumulation of cholesterol that is characterizes the SCD. And it turns out that all SCD-associated mutants of UBAD, and there are 19 additional mutants um, to the um, N102S mutation, they're all sequestered in the ER, so they're all defective in transport from the ER to the Golgi, and they all block the ERAD of HMG card reductase in a dominant negative fashion. So our next question was, does this SCD-associated UBAD modulate the ERAD of the reductase in whole animals, in mice? So for that purpose, we created a knock-in mouse, in which we changed, um, in this case, the N100 uh, correspond in mouse UBAD corresponds to the human N102. So we simply created an SCD mutation in mice by changing this N100 to um, a, a serine residue. So this slide kind of depicts our, our breeding strategy. So we actually introduced um, this N100 mutation into mice, and we took male and female mice that we have one good copy of the UBAD and one, of, uh, one copy that harbors the N100S mutation, and we bred male and female mice that are heterozygous, it's called heterozygous, for this UBAD knock-in. And uh, this mating led to three genotypes a wild type, a heterozygous, which again contains one wild type copy of the UBAD gene and one M102S knock-in copy, and then a homozygous, which can, both copies are the N100S mutation. So once we generated these animals, we then um, isolated these animals and took various tissues and did immunoblot analysis of HMG coli reductase. And that's shown in the bottom part of the slide. And you can see for the liver, we can see that the, the reductase levels are low in the wild type animals. They're increased in the animals that have one defective copy of the UBAD uh, gene. And they accumulate even further in animals that have two um, copies of the UBAD N100S mutation. Now you can see a similar accumulation of reductase in um, the eye, testes, spleen, and pancreas. So what these results indicate to us is that just like in cultured cells, that this um, SCD-associated mutation, this N100S mutation in the UBAD gene, leads to a block in the reductase degradation, and this block in the reductase degradation leads to a marked accumulation of the reductase protein. And it indicates that uh, the ERAD of the reductase is blocked in these knock-in mice. So our next question was, does this block in the reductase ERAD contribute to the opacification that we see in, um, of the cornea that we see in human SCD patients? So this experiment shows um, uh, the analysis of, of eyes of, of either wild type or UBAD knock-in mice at the age of about 50 weeks. And what you can see after 50 weeks of aging, in both the left and the right eye, we can see signs of corneal opacification. And I should point out that the cornea of these animals not only exhibit this corneal opacification, they also markedly accumulate HMG coli reductase protein, and they also have other hallmarks of, of, of sterile overaccumulation. They have increased cholesterol, and they have increased levels of um, genes that are required for cholesterol transport. These are typical hallmarks of sterile accumulation. So, indeed, these studies revealed that the mouse um, N100S, just like um, human N102S, resists this GGPP-induced release from reductase and blocks this ERAD. So in normal conditions, as shown here, this um, GGPP sensing that's mediated by UBAD1 is responsible for the maintenance of cholesterol homeostasis. However, in SCD mice, this um, sensing of GGPP is actually disrupted. And when it's disrupted, the UBAD always associates with reductase, thereby blocking its ER-associated degradation. And this block and degradation leads to enhanced synthesis and accumulation of cholesterol. And this contributes to the, the corneal pacification that characterizes SED, and perhaps other phenotypes that have yet to be discovered. So in summary, what we've discovered is that this UBAD protein continuously cycles between the ER and the Golgi. Once it senses a decline of GGPP levels in the ER, 
It then becomes trapped in the ER, where it then can bind to the reductase and block its degradation. And this block and degradation allows for continued synthesis of GGPP, even though the cells have plenty of sterol. So what really controls this is the level of GGPP within the ER membrane. So once levels of GGPP um, accumulate to sufficient levels, it binds to UBAD, and that allows UBAD to dissociate from reductase. It translocates to the Golgi. We believe that this UBAD-mediated sensing of GGPP becomes disrupted in SCD. And this disruption um, results in the inhibition of the reductase ERAD, and this inhibition of reductase ERAD contributes to the sterile overaccumulation that characterizes SCD. So finally, I'd like to acknowledge those that have done the work. So shown in the upper part of this slide are the people in my laboratory that contributed to all of the work I've presented in both parts one and parts two of my talk. And the second part are people at UT Southwestern that have collaborated with me in analyzing, especially the uh, subcellular localization of UBAD and these, these SCD mice. And then finally, our funding from the National Institutes of Health. <laughs>